Hello everyone and welcome to the first day of Mass Make March. Today we are making journal cards. This is the first day. So if you have not yet heard about the challenge, you didn't see my intro, I am hosting this for the entire month of March. We're going to build our ephemera stashes. I'm going to give myself one hour to make journal cards. And if you would like to participate with me every day or some days or whatnot, I would really love that. So if you're going to participate, please share on social media with Mass Make March 2023 as your hashtag. So let's just jump into this because I am excited. So journal cards obviously are, you know, whatever you want them to be. They typically have something interesting going on on the front and then writing space on the back. And that's what makes them a journal card. Um, they are typically, you know, um, some kind of a square shape. They can be totally freeform shape. I make all different kinds of journal cards and, um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. So I'm just going to start by um, getting a few backgrounds ready. So these are just random papers from my stash. These three are digitals from one of my digital kits on Etsy and my ecology kit. This is from Weathered Textures. It's been hanging around in my stash. So I'm going to just go ahead and um, tear the white edge off of these so we can get rid of that. I am also going to do my best to try to use up a lot of scraps this month. So if you are game to make a lot of ephemera and get rid of some scraps, um, then let's do this. I'm also going to be working on trying to use some fabric, um, using up my fabric as well. Lots of fabric scraps in my bin over here. Um, I recently got this idea to keep this cute little basket of small fabric scraps over near my sewing machine so that when I'm sewing I can use them to add like a tab to the top of my journal cards, pockets, tags, what have you. Um, it's a nice way to just kind of use things up. Okay, we're almost there. I just got to get these edges off. I did do quite a bit of prepping um, in general for this month already, but there will be some little bits where I'm going to do prep like this just because I think it's also important to kind of show you the overall like the process of things. So with these, this I would use typically as like a collage background. So I'm going to tear this down to a size that I want to use for a journal card. And then these ones as well. And we're just going to start by like creating a bunch of kind of like square bases, square-ish bases of different sizes. You can make journal cards in, you know, whatever size you want to. And then this one, I'm actually going to tear the top off here. Just throw that in my scraps so I can use this foresty bottom to make journal cards and they won't be too long. And the same I think with this one. So now we have a bunch of bases and then um, we will get started. So I think I want to use a bit of um, a technique here and I'm going to start simple. I've got a lot of things sitting around here. So the first thing that I want to do on the whole concept of like using up scraps. So I'm going to use one of these Tim Holtz paper dolls because I feel like they're really accessible to everyone. Um, you know, you can get them anywhere really that like sells um, 
any kind of paper supplies. So I'm going to go with that. I recently got this really cute 49 and Market Tranquility Film Strip Frames and I would like to use one of them because I haven't used any of these yet. Um, I sort of was looking at them for a long time and didn't grab them. And then I just decided the other day that I would treat myself to grabbing one of these. So they have all these little tear apart pieces, right? So I think what I want to use is this. And I'm going to leave that whole window in there. And I want to put this over her face. Um, and then put them away. Okay. And then I'm going to grab some scraps. Okay, so I'm just going to call this like the handful method. This is literally a handful of paper out of my scrap bin. Just that's what we're going to work with. <laughs> okay, so um, what I like to do is just kind of start. I love collage. I love like doing scrappy kinds of collage. And we're going to start this way. Um, figure out some degree of what we're going to use on here. And then I'll begin to kind of glue things down. I think for that film piece that I'm going to need to think about how to attach it because it's made from like um, acetate. So we have to think on that one a little bit. Okay. Let's see what else I have here. All these cute little frogs, but they don't go with this whole situation. And a little bit of that there. So as you can see, like what I'm using is actually pretty plain scraps um, of like dyed paper and writing and what have you. So you don't need anything fancy. The biggest thing really is a focal point. Um, that's usually the, the challenge for me is like getting the right kind of focal points. But if you start with a focal point, then it makes things easier. All right, so I think what I want to do now maybe is just go ahead and glue all these down. And um, I'm going to find some poetry or verse because I think I want to use that today. I will just be one moment. Okay, so I found some verses. I actually didn't have to travel far because I have this little book called The Heritage Book, which is the writings of this woman um, that I, I got thrifting like a bunch of these little books. Um, and like she uses a lot of quotes in her um, book. Like it's almost like a little day book of journaling and quotes. And so I thought um, I will go with this. So nostalgia is longing for a place you wouldn't move back to. So we'll plunk that on there and then I'm just going to start to glue things down. So the first thing I want to do, I think, is just move this for a moment because that's going to need a little special, little special treatment <laughs> when I glue it. I have to figure out how um, to put that down. So we will lay this down here. This is just some nice old journaling, actually, some writing from... A journal that I recently purchased at a state auction. Yes, I think these videos are going to be an hour or less um, long. I'm giving myself an hour to make, but that doesn't mean the video will be an hour because um, it will include things like me running around to pick things up or something <laughs> like I typically have to do. Um, but yeah, we'll see how much we can get made in one hour. I think it will be quite surprising, honestly, because um, I usually start to feel like, am I going a really long time by about the half hour point or like 40 minute point? Okay, just gluing all these little bits down. Getting them roughly in the same place, you know, I'm not obsessed with how it's going to go, but. There we go. Hopefully my glue bottle is not clogged. It is. I have not been working yet today. This is my first 
work video of the day, my first wake up video. <laughs> Don't worry, there's coffee, so I'll be with you. Also, I feel like really excited because we're finally getting started on this. I've been planning it for a while now. Um, okay. Put her here. And I need... I have to get more baby wipes. I don't have any down here, but that's okay. We'll survive. I'm just going to use this piece of paper here to just smooth over that. And then we'll just kind of wipe this little excess glue away. Not too bad. Then this. So these two pieces are separate. Now, our glitter glue does dry clear. But I just want to use a touch of it. I don't want to have it bleeding all over the place. Okay, that's enough, actually. And then let's lay this down and smoosh it a bit. Because I don't want to lose the clarity of that middle window. I don't really think I will once it's dry because art glitter glue is very dry or um, very clear, but we'll see. Okay, that's good. Lie that down there. And then I know we had one more piece, this, that I wanted to be under it. So before I go too much further, we'll just slide this under here too. Okay, I'm going to use this piece of paper again to just, and then I don't get as much glue on my fingers. <laughs> Always the goal. Okay, so that's fun. And then I think what I'll do is just trim a titch off the top here. We don't need this little extra. Then I have um, a snippet bin off to the side, which I should just move here to the side of my desk so that I have it. And it's got little things like labels and such that I would want to put in my journal. Here's a cute one. Hold on. That's a cute little label. Just a few little finishing touches. Mm. Not like that. I feel like I just need something in this little gap, but I don't know what. Um. see pardon my reach I'm just going to reach a sticker way back here <laughs> I feel like I just need something here okay yeah let's do that and then we're going to be inking everything down and kind of making it blend and be a little more cohesive I just want to break up the squared kind of feeling of this whole Okay, so yeah, you can see that white vellum, obviously, but it's okay. We're going to be inking and playing around here a little more. Alrighty, so now I will grab my... I'm going to use Vintage Photo, I think. So first, I will go ahead and ink on top of this. And I want to ink on top of this doll and on this writing, all this paper, Let's get rid of this sticky paper. And then we'll ink up our quote a little here. 
go. Okay, so I think that feels pretty close to done to me. I will be doing stitching on a lot of these and I'm going to be adding a few extra bits and bobs. For this one, I think I'll be adding some of this gold netting and some of my hand spun yarn along the top of it. So I will just put these elements because they're going to go sort of like up here right around there um, and they're going to add to that. So I'll put them all together and just set this off to the side to our stitching pile. We'll do the stitching at the very end so it doesn't slow down like the overall making. Okay, now let's move on to the next project. My little scraps out of the way here. I've got a little too many scraps maybe, okay. So now I'll grab one of those weathered textures backgrounds um, and I definitely want to use, I think one of my paper, my paper dolls on here. I think that one will go well. This is from a new collection that I just put out uh, called Delightful Creatures. If you're interested in those, they're in my Etsy shop. So now let's go ahead and again, add some collage bits to this bit of that and that here then do I have um and maybe I'll put a little saying over there as well so let's glue down these this is from an old car book, an old car manual, all sorts of really fun illustrations on this very thin, great paper, really nice for collaging. Um, there we go. That there. So I'm trying to decide what to do today. My daughter had been feeling a little under the weather, so we were taking it kind of easy, but she seems to be getting around the bend now thankfully um and so we're going to probably go out maybe and take a nice walk a little foresty walk and try to get some fresh air I think that would be good for her and definitely for me definitely had a bit of a intense work week <laughs> some weeks are just really really busy for me but I try to set aside a little time every day to move, you know, mindfully move my body and make sure I'm getting exercise and um, also to create because that's kind of my mental health, right? Like I think I keep my mental health quite stable with a few different things. Number one is getting outside and getting exercise and preferably getting into nature and feeling a little more connected with, you know, the planet a bit and like just feeling like what surrounds you is wonderful and um, it kind of brings a little bit of natural positivity for me anyways and also just spending time with my children and my husband and then creative um, you know creative outlet okay so let's look at another one of these fun little quotes because they're really neat if you don't enjoy what you have how could you be happier with more that's kind of fun let's use that one and then I'll find something to mount it on as well to kind of make it stand up a bit. So I really hope that you'll play along with me during this Mass Make March. I tried to make the prompts really open-ended so that you could do whatever you wanted. If what you want to do is just cut pictures out of magazines, you know, as squares and back them and you know that's your journal card that's fine as well that's a really interesting and fun journal card and I'm going to be doing a little bit of that myself here um you know especially with vintage materials or thrifted materials beautiful books I I'm definitely like someone who spends a lot of time like um you know using up vintage and book material like as much as possible because I do love to thrift and <laughs> As is quite evident from a lot of my thrift haul videos. You probably know this. If you've been watching me for a while. It's 
kind of the only shopping that I enjoy doing. I don't do a lot of other shopping other than food shopping and shopping for children, you know, children's stuff. Okay, so then what else do I want to do here? Um, there's a lot of options, you know, you can do some um, painting, you can do some inking, stamping, lots and lots of ideas. But I think what I'd like to do with this one is maybe take some of this fun textury paper here and make like a tab up top for this journal card. So I'm gonna do that and maybe a little bit of gold ribbon as well. And that will be part of my stitching process here. I'll do that. So when I stitch it, I will stitch that on. And I like that. I think that'd be fun. The other thing I want to do maybe with this one <clears throat> is round the corners. Sorry, I shook you there for a moment. I need to rebalance my overhead um, camera track. Okay, so that is for that one. Let's just put those there. Now... Also from my curious creatures, I wanted to make, did I leave that hanging around? I don't need those. Those aren't what I'm looking for. Oh, they're over here. Hold on. So speaking of kind of squared off elements, I also have these. This is from my, um, my Delightful Creatures collection, this cat with the plants, and then this is actually from a vintage book. So I'm going to go ahead and turn those into journal cards as well. Um, just gonna grab a folder. So I really like backing things with these kind of folders. I love the Manila color. I think it's a really nice color. So we'll go ahead and just put these down. And sometimes with a digital, or with like art that you create for your journal, the only thing that you really need to do or may want to do is just back the uh, card to make it more sturdy. Um, or if obviously it's from a book, you want to get rid of whatever's on the back so that you have writing space. But sometimes that's all it needs. Like I'm also working with um, doing a little bit of work from my, so every month on my Patreon, I do a journal together kit, which is an eclectic collection of um, vintage scans, my own um, art, my own painting, like all sorts of kind of eclectic different sources of things. Um, and I, I like to make a journal usually with that whole collection, eclectic kind of commonplace book. So the, this is a piece from that, as is this little thing here, this little background that I made. I'm trying to work out some of my own wallpaper designs for printing some wallpaper that I want to design myself um, for our house. So that's one thing I'm working on. I might actually glue him here too, this bunny. This is one of my creatures. From my Delightful Creatures collection. And I'm gonna make a freeform shaped journal card with him. Just get him down on this Manila. I think the Manila color looks really cute with the color of his clothes. I know I'm using my sleeve here, I just, um. I have a little glue on my fingers and I don't want to add any glue mess to him. <laughs> and this is why I'm always doing laundry. Okay. So then with this one, I'm just going to literally cut around him, leaving a little bit of this manila here. So this on its own, to me, is just a fun little journal card. Just 
you know, you write on the back, you've got a fun little journal card. The other thing you could do if you wanted to do something a little more, you know, decorative or whatnot, is take a piece of fabric or a piece of ribbon, and you could make them a little scarf. You could kind of scrunch it up, you know, and stitch it on um, like so. Yeah, like we'll stitch that on and we'll have a cute little journal card that has this little like scarf and then there's still writing space on the back. You could obviously do something like this then and layer it down on top of something else like a journal card. Um, so yeah, so I've just set that aside. Now let's go ahead and cut these out. So definitely you could probably go a lot faster than I'm getting or I'm doing with my mass making here. I know some people just like really go like, you know, glue down 10 things, or add something to 10 things like a process. I am kind of going to be doing some of that because I think it's important to show you that you can, you know, you really can mass make, you really can do it. Um, if you have like a reason to do so, like you've got a show coming up where you're selling journals or, um, you know, and you want to make them a little, a little more um, marketable like you're making a smaller less expensive journal that is easier to sell than like a large junk journal you know because sometimes I find it shows um, it's more about having many things sell rather than a few large things you know it all depends on what kind of uh, show you're doing but um, you can you know really pump it out mass make you could print the same thing multiple times and make journals the same if you wanted to. It's really up to you. I personally don't do that because I just don't find it very um, easy. Like I can't, I get uninspired if I feel like it's work, but some people really thrive in that environment. So I'm telling you, like, don't feel one way or the other about it. Just go, you know, it's still hand making. It's still beautiful and wonderful. Okay, so these I think are what I like and I'm just going to ink around those two white ones this one needs a little focal point of some kind um, <clears throat> to be a journal card for me what do we have here that's kind of cute but not exactly what I want maybe this yeah I like that okay let's glue that on that would obviously be a cute little pocket or something too, but I'm going to make it a journal card because we often need like little, little journal cards, right? For those little tiny things that we create that are, um, you know, if you have multiple pockets, let's see what this says. The wonderful tree remains. That's nice. It was unusual. Just looking at word snippets here. Big oak tree goes home to her little cottage, a break in the clouds, in the darkening street. Okay, we're gonna pick something from here. I'm gonna go with the wonderful tree remains. So maybe that little um, flower is a witness to a big tree. Okay. I'm going to use that one on that um, and this one on here. So we're just going to get word snippets for everything here. It's good. <laughs> okay. Um, this one. A wonderful tree remains. Oops. Sit still. There. And then we ink. Set that aside, it's done. Then this one a break in the clouds, and I want to put that on a little bit of this cabbage dyed paper. Plunk it on here first. Gonna tear the edge here a little. Okay. 
then glue this down. This one I think is finished as is. I'm happy with it. Then there we go. Inked. Gotta go into the stitching pile now. I need something to put this down on this discover, not without amazement. And I think I want to find like a scrap that would be nice on that under that maybe this yeah A little bit of my hand dyed wool here that I may attach up top here when I stitch. I think that would be very cute. Maybe just a little bit of a smaller piece, not too big. Um, with something else like some book spine. Let's go a little grungy book spine and a bit of that to the top. Okay, yeah. Set that over there. All right. Now let's look at, so I have, um, that is a little, this could be a tall journal card. This is from my kit, um, but I think I'm going to maybe use that as a tag because it's tall. So I'll set it aside. Um, yeah. All right, let's continue. Where did I put the other half of this? Here it is. Okay. So now again, this is this and another piece from my kit. So I'll go ahead and um, glue that down. And then I have some of these mushroom cards. It's another fun thing to do with this kind of um, mass making is like when you glue everything to your backing like this if you have a nice big backing you can then sit and do your collage on this surface like once you get everything all you know decorated the way that you want to if you want to add things and then um you, you'll have like a nice basis to put your um you know to cut it out and then to put your stitching in stitch your final bits on and you've got this nice backed set of journal cards okay and then I have this small space here I can put this so these are all pieces from my journal together kit okay Over here, this is a smaller space. Do I have any little things? I do. There's one. Let's see. Yep, she'll fit there. So that's a little vintage um, photograph that I scanned and put in my kit. Um, of a little girl named Margaret Coley. And these are pictures from like the 1940s. That's too big. I'll see if I have one more smaller thing that I can stick down there, but if not, I think that's fine. There's quite a few on here. Okay, so now we can think about what we want to do to maybe decorate this a bit. Now, I'm going to grab, sorry for the arm, I'm gonna grab my uh, Sizzix gilding waxes. So for anything that's black, I love to use this 
particular gilding wax. It's um, Lilac Rainbow Sizzix Luster Wax. And it's just really pretty. It gives a really nice ethereal kind of feel. Um, and this image is one that I was working on for a long time. I actually have a second one in there. I think it's right here. Yeah, so it's these lit up deers. It's something that I've been working on. Um, and then I'll do that over here too, maybe a little bit. Do a frame to this. And this particular shade of Luster Wax really just works best on dark colors, mainly black. It doesn't really show up on anything that's not dark colored. Okay, so we'll use that one. And then for the gold one, I'm going to throw a little on to this card in the gold. looks a little messy right now but just bear with me here um do I have any I'm going to use some of these I have these Tim Holtz ideology um so the Halloween words but there's a few in here that I think would be good outside of Halloween throw that bag away I don't need it going to use curiosities on this one and then foreboding on this one okay Maybe spellbound on this one. Okay. All right, and then um, I'm gonna do my inking while I have everything here. Just going to ink this edges a little bit on the thistle fairy here and then our kitty cat all right so now like we have you know a decorated assortment here um hmm. I'm going to cut this out too this is a Russell Babes quote, whoever that is. How did it go on here? I might put it on here. It says, there's so much spectating going on that a lot of us never get around to living. Life is always walking up to us and saying, come on, come on in. The living's fine. And what do we do? Back off and take its picture. It's kind of a cool saying. Um, not that it's too small. Hmm. Oh, here we go. Jelly print. Jelly print would be good. A little scrap of jelly print. Just to have a little border that will raise up that quote a bit. And then glue that down. there because I don't want to lose that ladder that goes up to this little I don't know if you can see this cat I created this like little this little house this little town that's going into this cat <laughs> cat town all right so then we'll just go ahead and cut around all of these and I guess one thing is if you're going to be um rounding the edges or changing the shape of the card 
you might not want to ink yet because you'll have to go back and ink. And this one, I want to round the corners on, which is why I'm saying that. But I mean, it's not a big deal to just come in and kind of, you know, <laughs> touch it up. And you don't always have to. Sometimes I find I ink so vigorously that it's already inked. Okay, so that one's done. Then, cut this out. And this one, I think I will also round but I don't have to ink this one because it was waxed I don't know what it is that I love but I really do love a rounded corner <laughs> I really love a rounded corner Probably add uh, something to the top. Got this silver, oh, this silver ribbon. Hmm. No, silver's not the right color for this. Maybe. Maybe a little bit of this tea dyed wedding dress lace. If I have the right amount. Mm -hmm. no, wrong shapes. Oh, picky. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold on. We'll find something. Ooh, that. Let's use some of this burlap. That's kind of cool. Just a simple little burlap tag right up here. And I'm going to see if I can staple that on. I like that. Be kind of cool stapled. Hold on. Or, no, better yet, um, bratted, bratted. Let's put a brad in there. Oh, but actually a brad will just kind of hold down the center. Maybe an eyelet would be fun. Let's get an eyelet. I want a brass eyelet. Of course, I keep pulling gold ones. There we go. Okay, let's see if we can do this. Uh, sorry I shook you. I had to get my punch, which is on this overhead thing that I need to uh, re uh, rearrange a little. Okay, so I'll punch a hole here. Hopefully not through my finger. Okay, good. Oh, and it's black, not bronze. That's okay. I'm not mad. Um, okay, and then... Yeah, actually, black goes well with the Curiosities label. So that's fun. Let's put this back. I don't need it. Okay. Clear off the floor a little here. And this one, I think, honestly, I just like it as is. I don't need to add anything else to it other than that bit of ink. And this one, I feel like I want to add some kind of like a tree feeling element like I have this yarn but this yarn is a little um this was a sample of a polyester wool which or not wool but a polyester fiber which for me is so weird. I don't really spin um, synthetics. So yeah, I don't think I can use that. It's too weird for me. I need something else. Oh, here's some wool. That's some wool yarn right there in my stash. But it is quite thin. So I think I'm gonna wrap it around my fingers a few times so we get a bulk of it. Cut some off. And then I'll pair it with a little bit of my eco-printed fabric, I think.
and just kind of have them be together this way. Hmm, maybe that's a little too big for this journal card. Lots of adjusting to be done. So half of this, and maybe about half of this yarn. Yeah, that's cute, and that will sit nicely like that. Yeah, okay. That's done. Sometimes less is more. And then for this little um, cabinet card type photograph image, I'm just going to keep it as is. I'm not going to add anything to it. It's just very nice on its own. I do ink up the back of these usually like, you know, I go around the edges. I just don't want to waste a bunch of time in the video doing the boring mundane stuff. Um, and then this foreboding. maybe as it is or I might put a little bit of this burlap to the side here as like a side tab and actually I might eyelid it like I did on the other dark card because that looked quite cute let's do it With a gold eye at this time. There we go. Okay, so that group is done. I'll put this back. Oh, it's a little. I saw this little thread and it looked all fuzzy, and I'm like, is that like a little caterpillar? <laughs> it looked very weird. It's not. Don't worry, we're not being invaded. Um. Okay, now let's do something a little different. Let's use some of this book page, right? Totally like everybody has book pages. So let's do a book page and that will be fun. Let's do a couple. I'm just gonna tear a little off the bottom here that's the shape for that one. Actually, I just want it to be all text. Okay, that one. And we'll grab a couple more pages. Let's just go book pagey. I like to try to use like materials that everybody has access to as well as my own art materials because then I'm kind of mixing it up a bit. Um, let's move this over here. Okay, so now we need focal points and collaging bits, right? Not, not a big deal. So let me grab, let's separate these. There we go. Let me grab some focal points from my, my focal points and other things that don't belong in here bin because um, I've just started to throw things in here that don't belong here because I'm being bad and I want to find like something that fits roughly the size of these that little house is cute this is a bunny from the femur ember I think oh she's kind of cool I know this is from that's my house that I drew, but this lady here, she's from It Capilli Imaginarium, I believe, on Etsy. That's kind of cool too. Life is for the living. 
Okay, we have a bat. Maybe I'll do a bat. We'll see. Let's have to find the right mix of things here to put together this journal card. Sorry, I got distracted. Shiny, you know. Maybe we won't go with the bat. Um, just because I need something that has a little more coverage, maybe. It's a big woodpecker. Oh, let's do a blue jay. I love blue jays to bits. So this will be a blue jay one. Okay, so that's those. So those are kind of, you know, domestic things everybody has access to. Um, pull these little bits over here. And I see it sitting on my other desk here. Oof, precarious. Much precariousness going on over there. So let's just um, go with those. And then for the third one, I'm going to use a piece of my own art. Uh, what do we have here? I just have this like bin of paper dolls at the back here on my desk. So if you see me reaching, that's why. I was trying to find somebody who's the right size. I don't want to pull the whole thing up here. I don't want a bunny. I want... Oh, I like him. Hold on, let me get a handful of them and pull them up. Wait, come, 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 come. Oops. I'm definitely going to have to crawl under my desk later today because I, I know things have fallen under my desk. There's someone I like. Let's go with her. Okay. Actually, I love this bunny. Too tall, though. I want to cut the ears or the... Yeah. Okay. The chosen one. All right. So, we've got a pine cone that's kind of shiny there. That could be nice behind here. That came from a greeting card. I would love to use it up. This is like a fun little tag. Maybe some green behind here. Hmm. That doesn't quite go. So collaging is like a really nice way to kind of make journal cards, I think. I always feel like the journal cards I make from collage, like, I just always feel very good about them. Like, they're interesting and fun. I like the idea of using these labels on this one. It's, like, kind of a nice theme of, like, these little framed elements or something. Okay, then this one. I think I'm good, actually, with that. This one I might do... I might do a little bit of a background. Let's see. That could be too distracting. Yeah, it's too distracting. Um, something that offers a little color but not too much distraction, which could be some of this lovely cabbage dyed paper. Come, come along, come along. Sometimes I wish with collage that it had the ability to stick things down when I needed them to be stuck down, like automatically it, it knew when I was done fussing around. That would be great. I need, it would be really cute down here is like a little postage stamp or something. So I could go to my postage stamps, but I think I'm actually just going to go to my snippets here. I have so many little snippety things that are like postage stamp sized and otherwise like relatively close to postage stamp, like this little ticket that and let me see if I have um that's a fish we don't want to put a fish there um, maybe some more cabbage dye paper but a little different colored okay then down here do we need something down there Another little label of some kind or something. Hmm. Oh, that's a little fabric. That could be cute. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Hmm. 
Now we proceed to the gluing. <laughs> My least favorite part. I'm going to do a bit of top-down gluing with this. Um, so we'll pick this up. And we're just going to unclog my bottle here, hopefully. Nope. I often think Pam at the Paper Outpost has a really smart idea about keeping her glue bottles upside down in like this water bottle stand that she made. But the thing that stresses me out is like you do lose glue because it like drips because it's downward. But like she said on one of her videos that I recently watched, you know, yes, you do lose a bit of glue, but your glue is always ready to go. Although if glue was not so expensive, holy moly, is it ever expensive? I'd be maybe a little more willing to say, ah, it's fine. But I'm really particular about the glues that I use. Because nobody wants to be like dealing with something lifting up after they've glued it down. It's very annoying. Looking at you, Almer's glue. <laughs> Before I knew better. Got started making paper art and journals. And I started using Almer's glue. Had no idea that it was like there was a difference in glue stick. Oh, yes. So I think I spent a good six hours like going through a series of journals that I made in my early days and like re-gluing everything down because Elmer's. Okay. All right, so there's that one. And we have to back these, but I'm just for now going to get everything glued down here. Now this is paper just paper to paper so we can use glue stick. This was a house that I designed for when I did the Adams Family, the Morticia from the desk of Morticia Adams journals. That sketchbook, at least as I'm filming this, is still in my shop and I'm tempted to keep it because um, it's really cool. It's hard to explain but like the uh, paper inside it. it's all hand dyed paper in really nice colors and like I designed my own paper dolls for it and they're fun little like Adam's Family characters and oh, it's just a fun book. I hope somebody picks it up because it's really cute. Okay I'm gonna put that up on an angle kind of. There we go. And then yeah, I think this little, this woman here, she's from the Storyteller Collection from Icapilli Imaginarium on Etsy. All right, that's that one. And now this one. Okay, let's just do this kind of piece by piece. As much as I would like to go top down. I don't think I can really with this one. I need to just lay it down. Okay. It honestly sounds like one of my children is running on a racetrack upstairs. Like it's this thump, 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 thump. I'm sure you can hear it. I know when I look at my videos, um, I can often hear it, but there's nothing I can do. <laughs> we can't get medieval, they're children. So <laughs> I just have to deal with it. But I'm getting them out today because we've been... Well, not all of us and all the time, but definitely my daughter has been like stuck in the house because she wasn't feeling well and I just want her to get well and we're going to walk today then get her some fresh air because as much as rest is good and it is good because um, she had a fever, but her fever seems to have waned now, which is good and I think she'll be benefited by some nice fresh air. Get out of the house. I need to get out of the house. I'm thinking of actually going today to the, the gym and doing a little bit of me time as well as a little bit of workout and swim and maybe even just soak in the hot tub. So the, the gym I go to, like, it's, well, one of them. I go to several different ones because I'm part of the community center program in my area. And... I've got to say, like, the one gym I go to, mainly it's all, like, seniors doing, like, aquafit and just chilling in the hot tub. And 
I could not be happier to just hang out with seniors all the time. I'm like, when do I retire? Please sign me up. I'm totally down with this, like, all day turning myself into a raisin in a hot tub kind of life. I'm good. Let's do it. <laughs> yep. Okay. Now let's back. Whoops, we just bent the tail. There we go. Let's fix that. Sorry, Blue Jay. All right, let's back these three. Um, okay, okay, okay. Some blank paper here from a sketchbook. Let's put this on there. And I'm going to stitch these. So I'm just going to use a bit of a cursory quick glue stick. I'm so excited to see how many pieces we're going to have at the end of this. That's the joy of mass making, right? Is like you build up your stash and my stash is always depleted. Once I've made um, a commonplace book, like it just gets completely depleted because I'm like, oh, I have all these already finished pieces to put into this journal. It's great. And then as nice as it is to have a journal come together a little quicker, it's like, oh, okay, that was the end of that. And you think, that was a lot of work and it's gone already. That was only enough to fill this. It's usually not even a whole journal. I end up, I don't think I've ever made a journal all from pre-made ephemera ever. Because there's always some sort of an underlying theme in my journals, so we don't, um, we don't get that lucky. <laughs> also, I think I just wouldn't, I wouldn't love it as much because I have to feel like there's something that's like a concentric piece that goes through the journal that makes it one journal. I don't know. That's just me. Well, it needs to move over just a touch because I don't want to be on that line at the back. I want this to be blank on back. Okay, this. Now... glue book I'm using was from a book called Thorn Apple Tree, which I think is the prettiest name ever. So I'm happy to use pieces of this vintage book and use have that Thorn Apple Tree name showing. Okay, so these are going to get stitched. Um, we have reached the one hour making point. So I'm now going to go do all the stitching and we'll come back and we'll do a little parade of all that we've made. Okay, would you believe we made 17 journal cards? We did. So, Blue Jay. Um, and like I mentioned, this is the scraps that I keep over in a little basket by my sewing machine. So a little bit of lace, a little bit of um, viscose there that just really went with the card well. Um, and then this one, of course, all stitched around and I added those elements up here. Again, some scraps added on this one. Another little scrap for that one. This one I just left without fabric, just to show you, you don't need fabric. That little simple one, not even stitched. Another one, not stitched. And this one, I added those elements we talked about up here. This one, not stitched. This one, kept simple. Uh, this one, I stitched that yarn and the little eco print fabric up top. A couple more, not stitched. Same there. This one I stitched around but didn't add fabric. Um, added some of that, that wool and the book spine elements that we talked about. And then stitched his little scarf on so that, you know, we have this little freeform style journal card. Those are often some of my favorite journal cards. So look at this. We have all this ephemera. Thank you so much for joining me for day one of Mass Make March. We can say we completed the journal cards. And what I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to write down how many we made. How many did I say? Oh, my goodness. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 
15, 16, 17. Okay, so let's just write here, 17. So I'm going to do that. I was thinking at the end of all of this, I would keep a box that I keep all the ephemera that I make in because I imagine I'm going to have a big box. However, I think I'm going to need to use some of this ephemera because I'm using elements from um, a kit that I'm working on a journal for. So the journal that I'm making, I'm going to need some of these things for. So I'm not going to collect everything as I go. I think that will be good anyways, because then like I'll keep everything in motion, right? So thank you for joining me for the first day of Mass Make March. And let me know, leave a comment. Um, if you are taking part, I would love to know. If we don't already follow each other, um, you know, I would, I'd be very interested in your YouTube channel, your Instagram. I'm on Instagram as Studio Lou as well. And that, this is also another place you can find the prompts. Um, I've linked them down below in the description of this video. Um, I have them shared on my Patreon for free. They're there. Like you don't have to log into Patreon or anything. You'll just see the image. You can download it. So that's it for me for now. And I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.